Hi, I'm Easel Monster, and I am a monster artist. And this is how to draw funny cartoon postures step by step. Keep watching. A cartoon is a visual shorthand. When you draw a cartoon, you're not trying to draw all of the details of a character's anatomy. You're only drawing the things that show your audience who your character is. And not just with the character's face, but with their whole body. Let's draw four different kinds of cartoon character body types. Let's draw the cute character, Aww. the screwball character, the goofy character, <laughs> and the heavy character. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold up there a second, Easel Monster. Where are you getting those four ideas from? I'm taking these four cartoon character body types from Preston Blair's book, Animation by Preston Blair. See the link in the description. Preston Blair was an animator for Walt Disney and the MGM Studios. He worked on Pinocchio, Bambi, Fantasia, and a whole list of other cartoon classics. Hey, learning about the history of whatever you're studying is a really great way to get better. Whether you're an artist or a creative person or not, learn the history of what you're interested in and watch your own work get better and better. Yeah. The cute character. Aww. Step one. Draw a line at the top and a line at the bottom for how tall you want your character to be on the paper. How much space do you want the character to take up? A standard cute character is about two and a half heads tall. And that is talking like an artist. Using a character's head as the unit of measure for how tall the character is, man, that is what monster artists do. Right there. How many heads tall is your character? Step two, draw the basic shapes. Usually, this means drawing the head and the torso. Cartoons are always about basic shapes first. Big ideas come before little details. Get your basic shapes right first, then work on the little details. And that's not just true for art, boys and girls. That's true in life. Step three, draw in the details. Keep these design points in mind when fleshing out your cute character. Overall, it has the proportions of a baby. It has a big head in relation to the body. There is no neck. The head rests right on top of the body. The body is pear-shaped and classically is about as tall as the head. The back is slightly arched, which helps emphasize the relationship between the head and the butt and helps the butt pooch out. It also emphasizes the bulging tummy and gives the character a chubby, well-fed look. The arms and legs are short and chubby. The hands and feet are small and stubby. Hey, that rhymes. And you know it rhymes. Uh, yeah. Cute characters have a high forehead. This helps them look innocent and childlike. The eyes are placed lower than on a grown-up's head and are often wide set. Keep the nose, mouth, and ears smaller than on a grown-up's. Some examples of cute cartoon characters include Tweety Bird, Porky Pig, Rocky J. Squirrel, every single Peanuts character, and every single baby animal in Bambi. You can probably think of some others. The Screwball Character. Step 1. Draw a line at the top and a line at the bottom for how tall you want your screwball character to be on the paper. How much space do you want the character to take up? Screwball type characters have a greater range in size than cute characters, but often are somewhere between three and a half and five and a half heads tall, not including the rabbit ears if you're drawing Bugs Bunny. Step 2. Draw the basic shapes. Usually, screwballs have an elongated head, a skinny neck, and a pear-shaped body. Arms and legs are usually skinny, and the hands and feet are oversized, which adds to their expressiveness. Step 3. Draw the details. The features on a screwball are exaggerated to add to their expressiveness. The eyes sit about halfway down the face. Keep in mind, the lower the forehead on your screwball character, the more impulsive he'll seem. Probably because there's just not a lot of distance between his eyes and his brain, so he doesn't have a lot of space to process information. He just, boom, reacts. Screwballs have a big mouth. Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, 
Bugs Bunny, the Pink Panther, Bullwinkle, Woody Woodpecker, the Cat in the Hat, and the list of great screwballs goes on and on. Basic shapes. I said basic shapes. The Goofy Character. You know, you don't see as many of these in cartoons anymore as you used to. These are the simpletons, the clodhoppers, the chinless wonders, the rubes, idiots, dolts, dummies, nincompoops, morons, dunces. Maybe you don't see them as much in cartoons anymore because now you see so many of them in real life. Hmm. These can be lovable but stupid, and often the goofy character functions as the butt of the joke. Step one, draw a line at the top and a line at the bottom for how tall you want your goofy character to be on the paper. Step two, draw the basic shapes. There is a lot of similarity between the size of the screwball character and the goofy character. They're both usually between three and a half and five and a half heads tall, but here with the goofy character, the posture makes all the difference. Whereas a screwball sticks his chest out, ready for action, a goofy character's chest is sunken in, like life was throwing stomach punches and the goofy character just wasn't quite smart enough to get out of the way. Step three. Draw the details. He has a long, skinny neck, hump back, droopy shoulders, long, droopy arms, saggy butt, baggy pants. Does this sound like anyone you've ever seen at the convenience store? Big, clumsy hands and feet. He has a small head. Remember, he's a simpleton. He doesn't need much space in there for brains. His eyes droop like he's half awake or half baked. Take your pick. Often, a big nose, buck teeth, and this is all important to the character type. No chin whatsoever. If you want to convey that a character is a simpleton, this is your go-to physical characteristic for doing that job. Chins are for leaders. Does that Brannigan have a chin? Come to think of it, do any of Matt Groening's characters have a chin? Is Matt Groening's entire career built on chinlessness? Man, that is what I want in a jar after he dies. Bring me the chin of Matt Groening. Goofy characters include Pete Puma, Beaky Buzzard, Chumley, Pinky, Paul Rugg, and of course, Goofy himself. The heavy character. Yeah. These are the bruisers, the bears, the barrel-chested bouncers ready to start or finish a fight. Step one. Draw a line at the top and a line at the bottom for how tall you want your heavy character to be on the paper. Step two. Draw the basic shapes. Little head, big barrel chest, small hips, short heavy legs, long heavy arms, big hands. Step three, draw the details. Often, the heavy character has heavy eyebrows, close set eyes, a big mouth with a lower lip that sticks out, little ears, a big chin, and a thick neck. His chest is stuck out, and he looks like he might be carrying invisible watermelons under each arm. Examples of heavy characters include Bluto, Brutus, which I think is actually the same guy, that fat opera singer from Long Haired Hair, Johnny Bravo, Buzz Lightyear, Mighty Mouse, Magilla Gorilla, Eduardo, and loads of others. That's the four body types for how to draw funny cartoon postures step by step. Hey, if you laughed, if you learned, if you liked this video, please do the following five things. Please like, please subscribe, please leave me a comment, please share this video with someone you think would be entertained by it. I'm trying to grow here, and I could really use your help. And finally, go to paintbymonster.com and buy some of these little Go Make Some Art buttons. Two dollars each, plus shipping and handling. They're an inch and a quarter, glossy finish, with a little picture of me saying, Go Make Some Art. I'm Easel Monster, this is Paint by Monster, and... You know what to go do with yourself, right? Go make some art. Make a drawing or a painting. Go make something entertaining. Make some art. Go make some art. Go get your pencils, paints, and papers. Blaster, chisels, markers, scrapers, rulers, canvas, brushes, hammers, nails, and tape. Guitars and super glue. Get glue and macaroni. Cameras, frames, and fried bologna. Go get anything you need for making art. That gnawing feeling deep inside that you can do it isn't lying to you. Get up off your butt and make some art. 
Paint by Monster is made by one monster sitting in a tiny upstairs bedroom studio smack downtown in Muncie, Indiana. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, go make some art, and bring me the chin of Matt Groening. Thank you.